This is my robotic lawnmower. And this is what happens when you give someone whose only strength is printed circuit board design a big DIY outdoors project and two weeks to make it. Let me explain. You might have heard of robotic lawnmowers before. This one is the Luba Mini all-wheel drive from Emotion and it pretty much just auto maps your lawn using AI and periodically mows it with some cool features that I haven't even tried exploring yet. But there's just one issue. When it's all done its mowing job at the end of the day and clicks back into its charging station, it's completely exposed to the elements. And the only solution we have from Emotion is, well, this block of plastic that costs $300. And while that's a working and proven solution to help protect our robot lawnmower here, that's exactly what we don't want. So why not build a cloud-connected smart garage for it instead, which can automatically sense and control the door when the mower is coming in and out, and include a smart weather station too, since you might as well add it on for something that's going outside. Seems pretty simple and easy, right? Well, for someone that has a monthly video schedule, no, not really, because I'm an electronics guy. And I've never had any other projects which had forced me to develop my mechanical and software skills like this one. Nevertheless, I got designing. First off was the frame. Wood? Doesn't seem like a long-term solution. Plastic? That can weaken in the sunlight and it's hard to fabricate custom parts this big. But aluminum profile? It's very modular and can probably support whatever door mechanism I'd like. Which ended up being this tilt and slide sort of thing which only requires one hinge point moving up and down and the other hinge point moving side to side. We got the stuff for that from a local store, which obviously wasn't cheap. And in terms of the side panels, some guy at Bunnings gave us the advice that using ceramic fiber boards would be good for that. Which kind of remind me of asbestos, even though I haven't even seen that since I'm like four years old. So far, this is what the garage looked like in 3D. Now, what about the sensors? Well, after some quick research, I decided that we would use a waterproof laser distance sensor to sense the robot coming in from the outside, load cells acting as a scale on the inside to detect when the robot's on its charging platform, a time of flight sensor to sense the robot coming out of the garage, and an accelerometer to sense the angle of the door. For home network integration, the obvious choice is ESP32 with its extensive libraries and on-chip wireless support. But this time, instead of powering it through USB-C and controlling it through Wi-Fi in the finished product, we can use PoE Plus for up to 25.5 watts of power and data through the same port. Now for the PCB, and for this one, you know, I could have made a custom PoE Plus design, but look at this thing. It's nasty. And without much prior research, I was afraid I'd mess something up or just not be able to design it quickly enough to get this video out in time. Because there's no point if I don't actually understand how what I made works. So I just bought the ESP32 PoE2 from Olimex and made this add-on PCB for it, connecting with a ribbon cable, which could help it cleanly interface with all the sensors and be programmed while powered since stuff clashes if you plug these two in at the same time. About this add-on board, by the way, I found out that the ESP32 PoE2, in simple terms, has literally like three signal wires free that wouldn't confuse other parts of its circuitry. So I managed to cram all seven sensors on the same two wires when it usually would have taken seven or eight to do the same job. I used Phoenix contact connectors for easy wiring and also quickly modeled up these aluminum brackets for the door mechanism so that we are all ready to export the files and send the PCBs and sheet metal parts over to this channel's sponsor, PCBWay, your one-stop shop for all your manufacturing and prototyping needs. And they're still offering amazing deals, like $34 for 10 assembled two-layer PCBs and CNC machining starting from $25. PCBWay makes these videos possible, so if you'd like to help support the channel, create an account using the link in my description and get $5 off your first order. Before the PCBs arrived though, I realized I made two major mess-ups. The ribbon connector pins were flipped around. Not that way, this way the way that I would have only known if I checked the footprint of both devices very carefully. So as a last ditch attempt, I ordered some JSTs with wires so that the two boards could be disconnected from each other just as easily. It just wouldn't look as good. Now it was onto the construction, and I think you guys are gonna like this part because you're gonna see me suffer a lot here. Enjoy. So by now, this is already like three hours in, which just goes to show you how fun crimping wires yourself is.
after plugging everything into my computer, I soon realized that I had screwed up the programming circuit because while it works for ESP32 S3 and C3, it won't work for the base ESP32 for some weird protocol reason or something like that. Anyways, I got the sensor working after a few hours, which was cool, and then I got the motor driver working after a few hours because I didn't know how to read registers in a datasheet. Here's my first prototype of the garage door opening mechanism, and as you can see, uh, it garages the door well. Then it was time to start putting the main thing together. A lot of cutting and drilling with ceramic fiber boards initially, But for the front door thingy, it was a little too flaky to accept a bolt, so we tried acrylic. And what's really interesting here is the fact that these eye protection glasses are actually falling off the piece of acrylic due to the immense vibration that they are experiencing. Then my dad accidentally broke the piece of acrylic while we were cutting it, and it was back to Bunnings for the 19th time for some more shenanigans. That's what I'm talking about, the nuts. Yeah. Do we have nuts? Yeah, 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 we do. Oh, okay, well that's what I was trying to ask. We got a piece of plywood while we were at it, and then I had to screw around with the attachment of the door to the aluminum profile rails because I hadn't designed the custom brackets properly. This also included physically widening the garage so that the plywood piece would fit without any additional cutting. I also need to remove these things. After a quick break for some dips outside, this is a PR by the way since I'm still learning, I came up with this 3D printed solution. And it actually ended up working, but do you see the issue now? I can't pull it properly. It just wouldn't work. I did find a solution for it, which is to apply force vertically instead of horizontally, but at this stage, it was almost three weeks after we'd planned to deliver this project, and my parents and I both agreed that it was time to make this a to-be-continued. So if you want to see part 2 of this where it's actually working, as well as my next video where I attempt to power my whole house with three 18650 batteries, make sure to like and subscribe, and also comment down below any improvements or suggestions you have for this project.